actually. But before we start our part, I just want to honour you, honour you, as part of a straight from the heart, heart, explanation of this creation. Because it's a lineation illumination with imagination, you see. But you have to understand, sleight of hand, a few things at first, the worst. I'll make the lisp as crisp and tame so you can clasp and forge and feign the feel of emotion through this commotion and I'll try to stay sane while I explain. So, here you go. I'm a public dyslexic who's medic assessed it with a vascular necrosis as the diagnosis of the mandibular condyle with a refill of happy pill creating while intaking so I don't go downhill. It's an uphill treadmill with the odd little standstill, and this may be overkill or worse still, overspill, <laughs> that starts as a small tick, a pinprick through fabric, turning into slapstick in front of you, public. So I'll take the black flack, which forces a step back. I'm still... I'm still riding bareback. <laughs> Though I'd love my chair back. While waiting for my clack, imagining wisecracks, I will try and hijack this cul-de-sac comeback. So give me a chance while I'm waltzing this dance. And I'll provide romance if you offer finance. <laughs> <laughs> got all red-eyed and cried, though I'm sure he tried not to. Just over four months ago, clarified. It was true he had a heart attack out the blue, and it was true he was a goner full on a Friday morning. He was sound, sound. Then he hit the ground. When it was little and non-committal, he had a few beehives. Behave, he'd say, and just stay, okay? Then in, in with his big bear, bear-like hands, wear no protection. On reflection, collection of the lovely runny honey money. Logic. This was before we found him allergic. He got another hive, what a dive, an empty one, a wooden tempt me one, a couple of years ago in a warm swarm, found it and moved in. The day of the funeral, <coughs> it wasn't in Newcastle, it was guttural. So antihistamine to saccharin was took. Knowing my luck, I figured it wouldn't do me any harm. Calm, then I stayed as I saw the men carrying the coffin trample amply across the other graves to my grandmama, my dad's ma, while the sheep barred in the next field. Two years ago, the same nave 
grave digger my dad had asked for grandmama to be buried far down deep to keep a space a place to rest in sleep heaped my ma and I above when time comes grandmama the time line chimes and rhymes and a lifetime closes and is lowered. It was over. But I found the four-leaf clover and was about to walk and talk and squawk and stalk and walk away when there was movement. And room for improvement in this line, but back to the rhyme. Above the coffin, I'm not laughing, but still down deep in the nave's grave, a runny honeybee, flying, not dying, crying, sighing, maybe all the while, but underlying life and death. Sometime before or after, my sister, bless her, did witness appropriateness in lightness out of politeness, the bees on their knees, for they refused to leave without them, at the live hive swarming. A second queen's been keen and is setting the scene, up in and leaving, us all grieving, and landing in the boat next door. Though there was more than four, so they haven't gone far. My dad did speak the cheek that he had seeked and peeked in the week, and there's honey money ready to be sneaked out. But there's no one with the know-how to do that now. Ciao. swear but I do despair but I am aware now I've grown my hair I dare to bear and if you care here's how I fare for I am an image maker extraordinaire for out of me stumbles, mumbles and tumbles, beauty from madness and madness from chaos and chaos that's senseless, and in all that forms a sense of a truthness. And now, with willingness, I will happily mollify, jollify, dignify, clarify, and even saccharify, if you so wish, from creating images in your mind with words to wordless wordplay that's seen but not heard. It's my strong point, or maybe it's the point, but maybe it's pointless. While I try to pinpoint, needless to say, I may also try needlepoint. Lambastations of being a visual junkie have been thrown my way, and all I can say to repay is yay. Let me play for you. Make cabaret for you then ricochet from you on this pleasant gay day for you. And while you sway in your plie, I'll learn to crochet. And now I will leave you and have hopefully pleased you. For once I have gone, you will then think on so to you, sir, and you, miss, and you, sir, and you, sir, I duff my hat.
my card. <laughs> Oh, and I also knit slipper socks, but how to explain that?